cute when I first came back. I went to some store, I can't remember, and word was out that he was here, you know. And so somebody who had known me from the past that I didn't recognize was like, Dreama? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, oh my God, it's Dreama. She came back and she brought Gilligan with her. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. They would go to the turnout out there where the fence is. I remember one night, one day we watched them put down a blanket and have a picnic on the gravel there. And they were all sitting on the fence with our house behind them. And somebody was taking a picture of everybody in the party, you know, with Gilligan's house behind them. So you had to put up with stuff like that. Then we had, this was a good one. We had, I remember two older ladies, bless their hearts, who came up one day and they came and rang the bell and I went and answered it and they said, yeah, we just came to see uh, John Denver. And I was able to go, you know, John Denver isn't here. John Denver doesn't live here. I said, no, he doesn't live here. And they're like, and I was being totally and completely honest, you know, <laughs> so that was kind of good. When that happened, I was like, oh, okay. And they meant Bob, I'm sure, but you know, they said John. So I was able to nicely say, no, John Denver doesn't live here. He was such, such a good man. Um, loved me so much and I loved him so much. Was such a good father to our son. Um, there's nothing I wouldn't do to represent him well. And I've always been aware of that. I feel a lot of responsibility for the foundation and for the radio station and for his legacy. And when my son moved next door, uh, I had to choose a care provider on the Title 19 waiver. And I interviewed um, all the ones in this area and I chose Rest Care. And so I talked to them. I thought, who better to tell me what this area needs, you know? And in light of the fact that the foundation isn't rich, it's not like I can build an assisted living home or give a family $100,000, I can't do that. We've supplied wheelchairs and bathtub chairs. We've supplied generators to keep respirators going. We're right now getting ready to um, uh, give an iPad to a young boy who does therapy. He's nine years old. They do therapy with him on an iPad, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing, I think. So it's the smaller price items, but they're a big deal if you need them and you can't afford them. And uh, I've had people tell me that I carry on well for him, and that's that's what I've always wanted to do. If I'm doing that, then it's aces, because I feel like um, I want to make him proud, you know? Even though he's not physically here, I feel like there's part of him that knows, and some way, somehow, we don't know how all of that works, none of us here, but, but I feel it sometimes. Have you done any acting? Uh, not in quite a few years, if you want to know the truth. I, you know, when Colin was born, I had to give it up. Right. And, um, that was really hard. I mean, really, really hard for me to let that go. I liked it more than Bob did. I was the young, sweet ingenue back when I, see, I couldn't play those parts anymore. That would be a whole new thing is to realize I'm the mom in the show now, not the not the daughter and all that. Ah, it could be scary. I would have so much more to bring to a character now because I have lived, I've taken some shots. Um, you know, something, I always did comedies and I'm, I'm good at comedy, but something serious I could really, really sink my teeth into now because, you know, I've lived and that makes a big, big difference. Little Buddy Radio, for anybody who doesn't know it, you know, locally in West Virginia, Southern West Virginia, it's 93.1 FM but you can hear it anywhere in the world online at bobdenver.com or littlebuddyradio.com. And it's really, have you listened at all? Ah, okay, we have to remedy that.